Hi, welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming, Urban Gardener. This is Debbie, and I'm out here right now just doing some potting up of some tr transplants, basically some cuttings that I had taken or little pieces or suckers off of the tomato plants, and um, I replaced the one that was dying in the garden. For some, for some reason, the roots were still good on that tomato plant, but the rest of the tomato plant had died. But anyway, I'm uh, transplanting in some cuttings that I had taken, or the suckers, if you want to say that, that have rooted. I basically just put them in this, this was a Lusa juice jar. Actually, it was my daughter's um, juice jar, and it's glass, sterile. So I sterilized it, just put some water in it, and put in the cuttings. And you can see all of those cuttings have roots. These were all suckers off of the plants. Um, I did try, I've never had very good, good success at just cutting a, say, piece off of a tomato that isn't really a sucker and trying to get that to root. It normally doesn't root for me, it just the suckers do. So that's what I did, is just put those in a clean, sterilized jar and um, let them root for about a week and a half and then we went ahead and replaced that tomato plant that had died out here now they'll probably wilt a little bit um, they normally do when they're trying to get um, started so that'll happen I did also go ahead and tie up all of mo well most of my tomato plants out here some of them are still too short to tie up mostly the San Marzano's the San Marzano's they seem to grow a little bit slower than some of the others just something that I have noticed and um, it's interesting because I had a random pea plant um, get started somewhere that it didn't belong and I've actually pulled it out three or four times and just basically thrown it down in the garden to compost and it continues to grow it'll reroot itself and just keeps growing so I'm gonna go ahead and transplant that back into where the other peas are and see if it does anything because it just keeps wanting to grow so I feel bad for just keep pulling it up and tossing it down and it keeps rerooting and trying to grow so I'm gonna give it a chance to grow um, and most likely what will happen is when I put it in there where it's supposed to be, it'll probably die then. <laughs> um, sometimes I don't have luck with the whole transplanting aspect. But you can see all the tomatoes have been, or most of them, have been tied up. The San Marzano's, like I said, are still shorter. I've got one that has gotten a little bit bigger. Um, but still they seem like compact plants. Actually two that have gotten bigger. But they still seem like they're mostly compact plants. But they are blooming. Um, so they are going to have tomatoes on them and I've noticed that this season and I don't know if any other gardeners out there that do YouTube um, have noticed that even though my plants have only been in the ground for about a month um, actually a little bit less than that they're blooming and starting to get fruit on them even though they're still really really short um, I've never had a problem with that they'll still continue to get big it's just it just seems a little odd to me that it's doing it this season versus last season. Last season, I, I know that I was worried that I was going to get any tomatoes or anything all the way up to about August, and I'll have to go back in the videos and look. But I remember thinking that. And I've noticed that all the squash are really slow this season to just get up and going. I mean, I've got them starting to get runners now, but it just seemed like it was taking a long time, and I remember that... I think I had squash starting to set on my vines sometime at the end of June or early July. Um, so just interesting. But the beans this year are, and I always struggle with beans for some season, or some reason, um, every season. And this year they just seem to be doing great because I know I replanted last season a couple of different times. Um, and it's just that this section of the garden where I plant the beans just seems really slow to start and it's it's the ground temperatures i know that the soil is still really cool even though the temperatures outside can be you know quite warm so i know the temperatures are a little bit cool we've tested the temperature before and um, sometimes it's around 55 to 60 which just isn't optimal for getting beans up and started um, 60 and over is usually the sweet spot kind of uh, the warmer the better but 
as long as it's not getting into, say, 90s or something like that in the soil. Um, but anyway, noticing that the onions have really, last couple of days, just throwing on a massive amount of growth. And I've toyed around with the idea of trimming the tops off um, just to focus more energy on the bulbs. But I've seen mostly bad results with that. Um, just looking at some of the videos and a lot of comments of people saying that the center of the bulb will then rot because moisture, rain, and stuff like that gets down into the fronds. However, this is Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we don't get a super amount of rain um, during the growing season. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to do a little bit more research on it and see about that. But um, I've noticed that the stalks on the onions are getting pretty good size at this point. So I think we're going to have a pretty good onion harvest. As long as they get at least medium sized, we would be super thrilled with that. And that's something that I can really use. Um, otherwise, if they just stay like green onion size, then I'm, I'm basically just growing green onions. And I have green onions already. Um, but we can always use them. No matter what happens, we can always use the harvest. Uh, we can dry them. We can make onion powder. We can make um, just something like dried chives. Even though I have lots of chives, we eat lots of chives and onions and things like that. So that is something that I'm looking at. But just going through the garden this morning and tying up all of these tomatoes was just making me realize just how beautiful they are this season, even though they're kind of slow to get going. I'm noticing that the um, super sauce tomatoes are just really putting on a lot of size now. Their leaves are getting huge and I was looking at some of the giant ox hearts that I had started and they're starting to get really big and um, they're actually a little bit bigger now than the super sauce tomatoes are. So I look forward to those. I really enjoyed the flavor of the giant ox heart last season. I was not going to plant them this season just because they have such a long, long growing season and we got such a late start. But at least if we get to green tomatoes, I can always just pull them off if it starts to snow or anything and run them inside and um, get them sitting in a box and they'll, they'll ripen up that way and they're just as good. I haven't noticed any difference in taste, to be very honest. Um, I know a lot of people will mention, well, they're better if they're on the vine and they ripen and blah, blah, blah. And I have not noticed any difference in flavor whatsoever. So, and sometimes I like to get the green ones anyway and put them inside and let them ripen because then I can kind of um, do canning at my own pace because some of them will get ripe before others will. Um, and so it doesn't put all of the ripening all at once. So that's a good thing. Um, but anyway, noticing little tomatoes on most of the plants, which is a surprise. I mean, I was really surprised when I saw some of my tomato plants that are in containers starting to get tomatoes on them because again less than a month and these are not very old plants i started the seeds probably at the end of march and i mean i guess that they would start uh putting tomatoes and blooms on now but they mostly were inside um all the way up until the first week of june and um just really didn't get a whole lot a super amount of growth on them until we planted them in the ground but they're looking beautiful, so I'm happy regardless. And our tomatillos are blooming and setting fruit on them. Um, and of course, we did lose that one giant tomatillo, but at least we have the two regular tomatillos. And we had buckets of tomatillos last season from just the two plants that we had. Um, or actually, we had three, but one of them didn't produce as much as the other two. It just seemed a little bit slower. But... Um, loads and loads of food on those and we're definitely going to do some salsa verde and things like that with the tomatillos this season and we may even do that with green tomatoes if we have a whole lot um, and just enjoying watching the well not watching the blooming of the roses but just seeing the blooms as I'm working out here in the garden and I just noticed that the white one is starting to bloom now you can see those there so just looking really pretty and I'm seeing all of my seedlings coming up for my nasturtium and um, the bachelor buttons and things like that that I planted in the back side they're all coming up and looking really really healthy and I did notice that my acorn squash that I had just thrown in here has came up you can see 
one there. And then I've got a couple more out here on the outer edge. Just uh, put them in a place where they can grow and not be in the main part of the garden because I have z very little space, almost zero space left now to plant anything else. So I'm hoping that the acorn squash come on. I notice they take a little bit longer sometimes. So we'll see how they do, but those are an early acorn squash variety. Um, so they should do quite well. And then out here I was just looking over into the eggplant bed and, and even though they're really short and they've taken a long time to get started, um, they're looking really, really healthy now and starting to put on a whole lot more leaves and I trimmed off a lot of the dead looking leaves or dying looking leaves off of them. And they have really, except for this one, because this one was still really small, um, they have really just started going like crazy. And I have a plant that started growing in here that I'm not really sure what it is. Um, I did not plant it. Uh, it kind of looks like a tomatillo to me, but who knows? <laughs> we'll find out, I guess, a little bit on in the season. And all of my sunflowers are coming up in here and actually have been up for a little while and starting to put on some size. And again, we've got the mammoth sunflower in the middle and then all around in the center or all around on the outer edges are different varieties, autumn beauties and um, Chianti and all kinds of little sunflowers in here that I've planted and gray stripes as well. Gray stripes will get pretty big, but they're not quite as big as the mammoth. Um, and then yesterday I went in and made some more hanging pots. I had some coconut core um, shells. So I went in and did that and I noticed that a lot of these little seedlings, these are, I'm not really sure what the name of the flower is, but it kind of looks like velvet. It's not a coxcomb. I have had coxcomb in the past, but they just come up as a little plume of velvet and I'll show you one in just a moment so that way um, you'll know what I'm talking about, but um, these all reseeded from last season that we had those little velvet type plants and um, I've got a whole pot full of them. So I went in and just took some out and put them into these hanging pots as well as we had a lot of reseeds of petunias and these are black petunias and my daughter really wanted those so there's a petunia there. And so I just basically put in a round circle and in the middle the velvet plant and then around on the outer part of this main circle I put in um, petunias. So we've got little black petunias in here everywhere. So I did this with three containers and then also planted some black petunia seeds that we had saved from last season as well. And then I went in and filled in a little space in here in this one that was already well established with some more of those little plants. There was a little spot here that there was nothing and I think we just ran out of um, flowers to put in here. So I went in and put some of those little guys in there too. And let me go ahead and show you what they turn out looking like. So they end up becoming these little guys. And there's several different colors that I have. Um, I have this is more of like an orangey red. Then I have a yellow, then I have a tangerine colored one of those. Um, and I even have a fuchsia one and a red one. Here's the fuchsia right here. And there's the tangerine colored one. So I have lots of different colors of those. And then I'm also thinking about when they get a little bit more established of taking some of these coleus out of this pot that I had rescued. This was one that Menards was going to basically toss. It was the last one they had and they had not watered it. It had completely wilted, um, almost died off. And you can see I brought it home, just basically gave it water and a little bit of some fertilizer, um, organic fertilizer, and it really just took off and it's blooming all over the place. So we've got two different colors in here. We've got this more of a fuchsia looking one and then we also have like a rusty colored one. So I'll take two or three out of the, that and put those in those hanging baskets as well when they get a little bit more established. Um, but just really pretty colors. And I noticed that my pumpkins were really taking off now. These are the ones that I had saved for seven years in a row. So they've had an established time in this particular climate. So they just really knock it out of the park when they get started. One of them's already running. Um, 
so that's really good. The Boston Morrows, that uh, suburban homesteader Wyoming slash Arizona scent, those are starting to really pick up in growth now. They are huge as seedlings anyway. You can see the size of those and then the size of my pumpkins, almost very similar. So getting really huge really quick and just everything doing great. All of my turnips have came up that I just recently planted. All of my beets have came up that I recently planted, but still struggling with this dinosaur kale. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and go pick up maybe some clearance seeds of kale because I don't have any more kale varieties and get those planted in here instead of this dinosaur kale because it's just not doing well here. And it's more of like an uh, Italian um, kale, I think, more of a, really heat loving probably does really well in the south um, so I don't know if I need to just put it in the sun maybe get it into the main garden somehow or if I just need to go ahead and plant some different varieties of kale which is probably what I'll end up doing some Russian kale and stuff so anyway those are doing really well hi that was my neighbor that came over to visit. He's just headed off going fishing. Anyway, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for new notices on videos as they come out. And I'm just going to go ahead and end this one because that's uh, what we're doing right now. Just transplanting those tomato plants that I had talked about. Everybody have a great day.